Hello, I am Father Eric Esparza, a priest of the Diocese of San Bernardino. And today I come to this conversation with Bishop Straling, the first bishop of the Diocese of San Bernardino, when we were created as a diocese in 1978. And now 40 years later, there's much to reflect upon, a wonderful history, and to have this conversation with the founding bishop of San Bernardino. Join us in this conversation of our history as we celebrate 40 years. As we begin our conversation today, reflecting on our diocese as we celebrate 40 years, we go back uh, to the years leading up to the creation of a new diocese in 1978. What was it like to be a Catholic in San Bernardino Riverside counties in the years leading up to the creation of the diocese? It's really going back to, as I tell the kids in the grade school, going back to the time of the dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, because I think for San Bernardino Riverside counties, that um, the days I remember um, were the, it's really kind of coming out of the horse age, the horse and buggy age. My parents um, remember that, but I don't. But San Bernardino was by streetcar. You go by streetcar over to Riverside, Riverside to San Bernardino, down to Los Angeles or Long Beach. And um, also um, in high school, the days um, that um, we had smudge pots and lots of orange groves and uh, lemon groves. Uh, grapes grew in the area. Um, freeways, there was no freeway 15 or 215 uh, available. Um, even Highway 60 was not a freeway. And um, you went, uh, it was really interesting that uh, it was uh, totally different. And then gradually the coming of television and the, uh, the modern world. Um, and uh, so, yes, I think now looking back to my own age, I've seen a lot of changes. And I think like you, Eric, that uh, uh, you came to the diocese after I left in San Bernardino in 95. And um, so a lot of people I remember, you never, you never met. That's correct. Uh, you being a priest of uh, the Diocese of San Diego, um, how was that relationship with the people that were really far out compared with San Diego uh, in terms of that relationship with the diocese? Well, that was the tension that um, when we became a diocese in 1978, that um, some people really welcomed it. They said, finally, the pastoral center is close to us. We can get to it if we have some need or concerns. Um, others said, oh, gee, the, the bishop is too close to us now. Mm -hmm. um, especially me for needles or blight. They said, you know, we want to be a long way off. <laughs> yeah. And so I think there were some of those who uh, really wanted the they wanted independence and want to be their own little thing, where others would welcome the community of the, uh, of the local church. I still recall it was a Friday uh, afternoon when I got a call from uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Maher from San Diego. And he said, uh, Phil, he said, I have to see you right away. And uh, I said, well, this is Saturday, Bishop. I said, uh, you know, I've got masses on, on Saturday. And I said, on Monday, I'm leaving on vacation. And he said, Phil, I have to see you. So I said, okay, fine. So I drove down to San Diego on a Saturday morning and met Bishop Maher in his, uh, his residence. And uh, I knocked on the door and he said, I opened the door and said, well, hi. He said, welcome. He said, uh, um, I've been asked to tell you that you have been appointed as the new Bishop of San Bernardino. I said, wow, wait, hang on. Uh, and he said, uh, I said, I said, what do I have to do? He said, nothing. He said, I just have to call uh, the nuncio and tell him that I've told you. I said, do I have any time to think it over? He said, no. He said, I've been told to tell you. I'm just telling you that I'm going to tell the nuncio I told you. So um, I said, well, um, uh, I'm leaving on vacation. Um, Father Bob Erickson, who was a classmate of a year ahead of me in the seminary, said he and I are going to Africa um, to uh, take a little trip. And I said, he said, go. He said, um, uh, we don't know when the Rome is going to announce it, um, so just go and enjoy yourself. So Father Bob Erickson and I take off on Monday morning, not knowing when the announcement would come. Oh, wow. But uh, so that's how the announcement took place. So you've, uh, over the years in these two dioceses, have had a facility to try to do what you exactly speak about, collaboration, bringing as many people into these wonderful celebrations. Well, one thing we haven't talked about yet is the the role of the diocese in the synod. 
that um, you, you might say, why in the world did they pick me to be a founding bishop? Well, I think that my work with the Diocesan Synod was what really kind of laid the foundation, that um, we had listening sessions throughout the, the, the all of San Diego uh, diocese, which included Riverside and San Bernardino counties. So um, part of it was to say, we want to implement Vatican II, make Vatican II living. How do we move from pre-Vatican II to post-Vatican II? And Vatican II was saying that it's all of us as baptized. We are all called to be participants in the church. Uh, yes, you have bishops, you have priests, you have deacons, you have religious men and women, uh, you've got the laity. And all of us are to work together to bring about what church is with Christ in our midst. So um, I think that um, the diocesan synod really kind of gave me an insight to a pastoral plan for post-Vatican II church. And uh, I think collaboration was an essential part of that, that all of us working together. One of the words that surfaced as part of post-Vatican II uh, and your work with the synod was collaboration. Were there other, other emerging themes that you use to kind of guide this process uh, of leading a new diocese? Well, I think collaboration is really number, first of all, I don't have all the answers and I'm, not, I'm no great scholar, mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, prayerfully I've learned how to listen and how to take in different ideas and then to identify different people who have certain skills and, and gifts and to call them to be participants. So it's amazing, I think, looking over the years of how certain people step forward with a gift. And we recognize that gift and we're able to be a participant. So to me, I think it was trying to collaborate and pull together all these people. I, I find it fascinating just to look at some of the numbers there. So maybe you can yeah. share some of that with well, us. Well, for those, uh, go to Peter Bradley in your archives and ask him for copies of the diocesan directory of 79 and 80, and then ask him for the directory uh, of 1995 when I left the diocese. And um, I think what's interesting is to see what's happened. It gives you kind of a clue as to the growth of the diocese uh, of San Bernardino Riverside. And by the way, I always say San Bernardino Riverside. Uh, we're inclusive. <laughs> I think the fact that it was named the Diocese of San Bernardino was probably because I was in San Bernardino at Rosary Parish, yes. but um, it could have just as well very been the Diocese of Riverside as well. But um, some of the statistics is, show you the growth that took place. That, um, for example, the number of parishes went from 87 to 99. Now this is roughly 16 years. Um, number of Catholics, 235,000. 590,000. And I think you said today we have over a million? 1.7 million Catholics in the Diocese of San Bernardino. And, and it's Riverside. also what, the fourth or fifth largest diocese? The fifth largest in the United States. Unbelievable. So it's and, continued to grow. Not only did it grow <laughs> in those first years, uh, 16, 15 years that you said, but also since that time. But, but also numbers. to think that one of Rome's objections in the very beginning was we can't put make it in a diocese because it it's not large enough, can't support, support itself. It. Unbelievable. But uh, number of priests, we went from uh, 180 priests in the diocese to 229. Uh, the deacons from 17 to 82. Now here's where there's a difference. It's number of sisters, religious women, went from 219 to 162. A number of brothers from 57 to 14. Uh, but then I think add to this all the number of laity who uh, came to be helpers and ministers in our parishes through the Institute of Education. Later that we would call Straining Institute. And well, I, I, always, later. I was objected to using my name, but I, they, they sort of pushed it in there. Yes. And now known uh, in the diocese as the Ministry Formation yep. Institute, which uh, thousands upon thousands of lay leaders have been formed through that early vision yep. of lay leadership that you brought. To but the, to me, that I think that's one of the great gifts of church today, that um, uh, we talk about we need a priest and we need religious women and men but also we need the laity to help carry the banner of the church. And uh, I think one of the joys that I have is to see how the Institute uh, for Education really took off. 
Now, in every ministry, there's highs and lows, blessings and challenges. As you've reflected over the years, uh, what were some of those challenges, but even more importantly, the blessings that you experienced during your time as the first bishop of San Bernardino? Well, I think as we know that in the beginning, uh, there were protests about my being ordained as bishop, that I was not Hispanic. And um, I look back and I see how, in a way, it was kind of bringing to the attention of the whole church in the United States, the needs of taking into consideration the various ethnic groups of our community. Um, so I think, for example, that we have many Hispanics. We, did not, we weren't given the attention that was needed to Hispanics. And I think all the protests of my being not Hispanic and being named as bishop, they said, well, what's going on? And uh, I think somebody expected that Bishop Gilbert Chavez, who had been stationed there, would be the appointed bishop. Um, so again, I think it was a great pain to work through all this, through the protests, through the concern, but it brought us about, I think, in a new way to put all these things together. And I think the growth of Hispanic ministry in the Diocese of San Bernardino was a great blessing. So I look back, it was tough at the beginning, but I think through great leadership, um, uh, Sister Teresa uh, Gomez, I think, and Father George Gonzalez, Father Rita Luque, uh, Pat Guillen, Manuel Guillen, uh, uh, a few other. Again, were great. I mean, yes, there were tensions, but out of that tension came something good. That's the most important is to be able to see what good can come, yeah. even from the difficult challenges that we are presented with. And I think also in Hispanic ministry, I think all the, the Vietnamese that came to the diocese and how we needed to minister to them. Uh, we didn't have all the protests and so forth, but there's a great need uh, for them. Likewise, the Native Americans. Uh, one of my joys was that uh, we could get out and minister to the Native Americans in the diocese. My regret is that um, I was never able, I almost succeeded once, to get someone from that community to be a permanent deacon. I wish we could have done that. I've been a great step forward, and I pray someday it will happen. But, um, well, maybe it has happened, but I'm not aware of it. But, um, and I think the Filipinos, um, I think, again, the blessing of San Bernardino is the mixture of people. So again, it was the parish visit, which I felt very important. So how do you do that? And it was just too much. A lot of territory to cover. A lot of territory, yeah. well, the territory I didn't mind. Uh, I enjoy driving, Did you? that was a fun, in my younger days, today is a little <laughs> difficult. But um, in the younger days, yes, that was not the problem. The problem was getting to all the places. So um, uh, I talked with the priest council, and I said, you know, this is getting too much. And it seemed that Rome was considering, you know, giving auxiliary bishops to assist in dioceses. So I said, well, let's try. So um, anyway, we presented our case, we had to drop all the statistics, the growth in the diocese, and I think they were kind of surprised that in 16 years, we were asking for an auxiliary bishop. But I think internally, the reference was there. The growth was there, the pressures was there. Rome and finally got the message, you can support yourself <laughs> as a diocese. So um, they, um, they said, yes, we will be willing to grant you um, an auxiliary bishop. But then what I had to find out was that then I had to present to them some names for possible candidates. Now, Rome made the choice, but you had to present some candidates. So uh, the uh, result was that I went to, well, each what we call it, uh, uh, region presents a list of names, possible names that bishops have proposed who might be uh, possible candidates. Okay. So I checked with all the various ones in the West and had various names I presented. And um, then also I went down to uh, San Antonio and there will be a man by the name of Jerry Barnes in one of the lists. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, that, um, so anyway, um, uh, Jerry Barnes was one of the names that was on the list. And um, uh, again, Rome came back and said, okay, we will appoint him as auxiliary bishop. And so I was pleased to hear that good announcement. I have to laugh though when I tell Bishop Barnes this, that um, when I went down to San Antonio for his farewell at the seminary, and uh, Archbishop uh, uh, Flores, uh, Flores, great man. Um, he said to me in Spanish, he says, oh, some come to pray and some come to rob. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, again, that's how his name got him and came. I still recall um, that Bishop Barnes came to meet me in San Bernardino prior to the announcement that um, he was going to be made auxiliary bishop. But uh, I still recall him at my residence on 17th Street in San Bernardino, coming across the lawn 
and, and I found out he gave the excuse that he had some business in San Bernardino. <laughs> but, uh, very important business very good, as it would come to turn out. But a great joy, I think, for the Diocese of San Bernardino. And I think what really excited me was that how he and I were able to work together and that when I left in 78, again, that he was... 95 is what well, 95, right. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> We were together for three years, right? Three years. 1992, he was uh, appointed. So it gave us a chance to really kind of gel, and also that he learned where we were, and that he could then build upon that. A thing that's been in my mind, and also it's my, when I came here to Reno, that um, there's a book called um, Peter's Principle, and written by a man called Peter Hull. And uh, the theory is that all of us have a, a gifts that we can share, and we come and we build, and we succeed in building those. And then we come to a plateau, and we can bear for a number of years. But then, ultimately, we can begin to slide down. And um, as I looked at to my ministry and where we had come in San Bernardino, I really felt we'd reached a certain plateau. So we accomplished certain things. There were some things I couldn't do, gifts I didn't have that Bishop Barnes was able to provide and to give. Also, he was able then to see new things that could be done that I never saw. And so I think it led me to say, okay, I've reached a plateau. I don't want to go any further. Could I have a change to, to move on to move something, on to something else? And I think also that I think to see how Bishop Barnes and uh, Bishop Rutulio and all of you uh, have built upon that and where we are today. I mean, I think of our, our Sarah House that we began in, in San Bernardino, I mean, which I see as a great success. And then to what Bishop Barnes was able to do to build the new place, the new facility, and the number of vocations you have today. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. That's a great gift. But again, um, I think you were able to carry it on in a new light. That's the gift. Uh, I think many of those who are collaborators with me are now retired. And um, this is also for the sisters and for the brothers. Um, I think the sisters we had at uh, St. Bernie's Hospital, for example, were a great group of gals. Um, the Benedictines in, in, in Riverside. So um, uh, the Carmelites in, in Redlands. And so I, I think Brother Boniface, for example, at, uh, at Al Carmelo, who's now deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, a working brother, I still re recall him. So um, I think that, yes, I think part of it is to say, God, give them eternal rest. Uh, for us who are still walking, give us strength. <laughs> give us strength each day. And for those who are still in active ministry, carry on. <laughs> you were the founding bishop of a diocese that is now turning 40 years old. What message would you have for the, the people of San Bernardino? All we can say is that um, I like to know what happened beforehand. And again, maybe this interview today and the videotaping can be a help. But I've always been interested in making sure that we try to make connections with the present age, with what's gone on in the past. Um, one of the gifts, I think, for the Diocese of San Bernardino, I try to do it here in Reno, is to have an archive department. I know Peter Bradley is carrying it on. I'm really happy to hear yes. that going on. Because in one way, I think we can lose connections with what happened beforehand. And I think the priests and the sisters and the brothers who built the Diocese of San Bernardino, those who built the Diocese of San Diego, uh, I think um, just to recall Bishop Charles Francis Buddy, who had a great influence upon me, who ordained me as a priest uh, in 1959, which is back of the dinosaurs. <laughs> but um, again, I think keeping that connection uh, is a joy. When we lose that connection, we kind of lose part of our, our very being. Just on behalf of us all, we're grateful to you, especially the opportunity to be here in beautiful Reno this morning to talk with you and to share these wonderful memories of our diocese. Well, it's been a joy for me to have this conversation, and I think also you challenged me to go back and to recall the gifts and blessings that we've had over the years. And um, I think, as we had our conversation, that um, it's really the blessings of, the, of God and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Bishop Charles Francis Buddy had a great devotion to the Holy Spirit, and I have tried to follow that because I think that what we accomplished it was not just us, it was the grace of God and the Holy Spirit guiding us. And uh, we had our ups and downs, uh, but I pray, and I think what I see today is that we have grown 
and we're continuing to pass it on to the next generations. So I'm very thankful um, to you coming up and to all in the diocese and to Bishop Barnes and to Bishop Rutulio and to all of and all the collaborators because we're a team uh, with Jesus Christ in our midst. Indeed, all things are possible with our Almighty Father, our God. Exactly. Would you be able to offer us your blessing as we end our conversation today? We bless the blessing of Almighty God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.